First of all, Stefan, thank you very much for coming down to see Thanks us here at CCTV. It's, it's wonderful to see you, especially after a very difficult season. Um, first of all, right off the bat, what went wrong this season? You know, from the beginning, we started out with injuries. You know, and when we had injuries from the beginning, that pretty much put us in a, a tough situation. You know, when you don't have your top players healthy and then you don't have your top players on the court, it makes it extremely difficult for you to really have a um, a season where you have an opportunity to go out and play consistent and give yourself a chance to win the championship. Very recently you turned 40 years old. You said recently that you decided to carry on if you're given the opportunity you want to carry on. Was that always going to be the case? Was your mind made up at the beginning of the season? Did you make the mind up at the end of the season? How did that I work? mean, I really wanted to play. I mean, because I'm still capable of playing. And um, you don't really get a, I can't turn back the clock and say, okay, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go play, you know, at a high level. And I'm still capable of playing at a high level. So. Um, with that being said, you know, being 40 years old and still being in shape and being able to play at a high level, that was something that I felt that I was, I, I should continue on doing. You know, next year will definitely be my last, my last season in playing basketball. From Brooklyn to becoming a Beijing native, Marbury has used basketball to bridge together his two worlds in America and China. When you retire now, do you think that the people in America will define you by what you've done in China? From what people have seen, you know, in the transformation of coming to play basketball here and winning championships, I think people have a different approach and a different idea about who I am as a basketball player and as a person. You know, when you're in your 20s, things are completely different in how you do things as opposed to when you're in your 30s. Um, so for me, it's all about growth and growing, and those are the things that have happened, and I think people will be able to to see those things. And coming to play basketball here in China, it allowed me to actually have a new fresh start. The 40-year-old redeemed himself in the PRC after a controversial spell in the NBA. He led the Beijing Ducks to three championships in the last five years to tip off a new dynasty in the CBA. The empire that you've, that you've built here, is there something specific about Beijing that, that went hand in hand with you and your personality? Could you have done it anywhere in China? Um, I really don't know because I know that it's been done here, but you know, what I do know is that, you know, the people here when winning the, winning the first championship, you can feel and I felt the city, you know, it was like you could feel the pulse of the city at that time. Um, it was something that everybody wanted. It was something that not a lot of people thought that we would be able to achieve. And then when we achieved it, it was like, you know, we did something that nobody never thought or believed that we can do. Marbury has grown into a team leader in the capital and the league is now expecting to develop under its new chairman, Hall of Famer Yao Ming. With your knowledge of the CBA, I'm really interested to know if you were given that job as chairman of the CBA, what, what would you do? Um, I, wouldn't, I can't say what I would do right now, but I will have definitely a plan that will um, allow the growth and the development of the players to continue so that when it's time for them to play, um, and the national team, the CBA will definitely be part of the preparation and them getting ready to go and battle the world. Because basically the, the CBA is that's being used for them to be able to go and play abroad and play in the Olympics to try to win a medal. And when it comes to China, you've obviously given back with, with many things, three championships, you do coaching as well. You've also said you want to get involved in coaching the national team and things like that. Is that how you intend to give back to China for giving you such a wonderful opportunity? Of course. Um, China has been nothing but gracious and, and, and amazing to me. And basketball is something that I love and it's something that I know. Um, I'm aware, I'm very knowledgeable of the game, so I know that I can have an impact um, on helping um, the players or whatever they, whatever they would want me to do. 
You know, I, I, I vow to want to coach the national team one day. Um, I know the players, I know who they are, and you know, for me this is definitely part of something that um, I feel like I'm indebted to doing and, and, and helping. If you let him get a pick, that means I gotta chase you. If I gotta chase you, and he said the pick, I'm always behind you. So don't leave before he come. We'll finish with a couple of questions about reflection and maybe looking forward. Let's say I've got my, my crystal ball here, and in a year's time, you're sat here with a championship medal round your neck. You've just won <laughs> at 41 years old. And you are sticking by your word. You're going to retire, and you're literally about to go to the airport straight after this interview, right after you've won the title, and you're recording a message for the Beijing fans, and it's your last message to them. What do you say? Well, Aini, I love you. <laughs> that's what you have to say. Yeah, that's it. And finally, we look back on this empire, as everyone describes it. We've got the museum, we have the stage show, um, we have the statue now as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not being flippant when I ask this, and it might sound like a simple question, but um, there's more depth to it than it sounds. What does it all mean? Um, it's a, it's, for me, it's beyond any words that I could use um, to express my gratitude um, and how I feel about how they felt in doing something like that for me. Um, coming from America and then coming here and receiving all, all of the accolades that I've received, um, when you look at that, you look at the story and you just kind of, it, it's kind of mind blowing because of the way how things were in America. If you look at that picture and then you look at this picture, it's completely different. Um, so, you know, when I look at what it means to me, I just, I say that it's, it's special, it's unique, it's, you know, it's God divine, it's, it's all of the different things that have to do with anything that's positive.